Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of how to make a point and click game in Unity. Last time, we created our sprites and imported them into Unity. Now, I would like to begin creating the movement patterns for our blocks and setting up our camera. I'm going to delete this crosshair since we're not going to do much with it, and I'm going to delete all but one of these blocks. So first thing, let's set up our camera. Now, when creating game, I like to work in an aspect ratio 16 by 9, because that way we can accommodate for different screen sizes and resolutions. As you can see, the size of the screen isn't changing when I move this window around. And then, I want to have a white background Maybe not that white. There we go. So now, I'm just going to resize it so it's at reasonable size. So now I'd like to work on getting the blocks movement patterns. So now I need to think of what I want the blocks to do. I want them to decide a random X position to pop out of and I want them to jump to be tossed up into the air and fall back down and maybe have them move with different velocities maybe they'll go straight up and down maybe they'll have an arc something like that so before we can do that we need to add a physics 2d rigid body 2d component and this is going to control our physics like if i were to click play our object falls due to gravity and we may want to lower the gravity but right now it's fine it's really just so we know how much upward velocity we'd want to give it so the way we're going to create the movement patterns is we're going to add a component a new script and let's name this block movement create and add and what this script to, is going to do is cause our blocks to move around it's really just going to decide a random exposition to throw the block upwards and based on that we'll just do other interesting stuff with our block. So before we start creating the actual code, we're going to create pseudocode in order to block out what we want to have happen. The way we're going to do that is hit the forward slash key twice and it creates this grayed out piece that you can comment your code. And this is going to be used to create just a list of steps that we want to have happen. So what I want to do is first create random variable uh, move object to somewhere somewhere on the x axis throw object backwards so object upwards yeah. can't talk today and then throws it upwards, then when it gets to bottom, reset, or reset once at bottom. And that's basically what's going to happen. So the way that you generate a random variable by saying float, and what a float is it means a floating point, which gives us access to decimals. Like this would be a floating point number. And the reason why we want to use decimals just to make it so it can move, be, have more possibilities for where it can come out of from the bottom of the screen. And we're just going to name this X position. We're going to make it equal to mathf. Wait a minute. No, wait, random dot range. And 
and this is just going to ask us for two integers, a minimum and a maximum. We want our minimum to be to the, as far to the left of the screen as we want it to appear. And our maximum will be as far to the right of the screen. So I'm thinking negative seven, comma, seven. Now what we want to do is make it so it starts somewhere at random and it moves somewhere to a random position. The way I'm going to do that is on the update frame, we're going to check if it has moved far enough below the screen in order to be considered at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to say negative 6 would be the bottom. And what I'm going to do is have an if statement that looks for a condition and then performs an action that you write in between these braces. And my condition is if this object's position in the y-axis goes less than negative 6, then I want it to generate a value of x. I want it to, and for testing purposes, just to make sure it's going somewhere random, I just want to set its position. You don't have to do this along with me. This is just for me to test that it's actually doing what I want it to. Okay. But if you're interested, this is sending the game object to a different position and I'm this is really something you should only use for debugging purposes mainly or if you're just testing just want a certain condition to happen when a player reaches a certain point. And this is going to move it to some random value in the x-axis and at 6 in the y-axis. So let's save our script and test it. And I'll click play. And it should be falling to random positions, which it is. However, as you can see, it's accelerating indefinitely, which is not good. What we want to happen is for it to reset its velocity and do something interesting when it's at the bottom of the screen. So that's what we are going to do. So this doesn't need to be at positive 6 because we want it to jump up from the bottom of the screen. So we're going to keep that negative. And now the way we're going to modify its velocity is by accessing a component. So we're going to use the get component method and we're going to get its rigid body 2D component, specifically the velocity. Once again, we're going to set it equal to a new vector 2. And the reason why we want to use velocity and not transform.position is because transform.position is more like teleporting. It will neglect physics when moving an object when you do this, but when you use velocity, it will be like it's pushing the object. Physics is still counted for. And just for testing purposes, I'm just going to say 0 in the x and 10 in the y. And what these f's do is convert, is just to remind Unity that I'm using floating points. You don't have to use them, but it's just a good practice just to remind both you and Unity what those values are. And as you can see, now it's jumping at, at different points in the screen. So the next thing we're going to want it to do is make it jump at different heights, make it spin a little, and just do other interesting things. And that's their plan for the next episode. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.